Hey everybody, this is Bill. Welcome back to the channel where we primarily discuss real estate investing, stock investing, and college football. Today, with college football about to start, we're previewing the 2021 Florida State Seminoles. So join us as we look at FSU for 2021. Given the state of the program, there was a great deal of optimism after the hiring of Mike Norvell. But before he could hardly get started, the Seminoles, and many other teams across the nation, were sacked by COVID. We noted last year there was a culture issue that Norvell would have to work around, which turned out to be much deeper rooted than we first thought. Given the state of the program, there was a great deal of optimism after the hiring of Mike Norvell, but before he could hardly get started, the Seminoles, and many other teams across the nation, were sacked by COVID. We noted last year there was a culture issue that Norvell would have to work around, which turned out to be much deeper rooted than we first thought. As part of the recruiting process, Norvell was able to bring in some high quality transfers at key positions, which can help FSU bridge the gap to success. In fact, in speaking about the culture, Jermaine Johnson, who transferred in from Georgia, noted the Seminoles, quote, family culture, unquote. So while the schedule is extremely tough, the Seminoles will be a much better football team this season, even though the win-loss record may not show it. With that in mind, let's take a look at this talented and improved football team. Offensively, perhaps the top transfer Florida State was able to bring in was quarterback McKenzie Milton, who was the color and pageantry postseason All-America quarterback in 2017 at UCF. Of course, Milton was severely injured the following season, and his comeback story has been one for film producers to take note of. With Dylan Gabriel at UCF, Milton's good friend, and an established signal caller, Milton made his way to Tallahassee to try to complete his comeback. If Milton can play at 85% of what he was at UCF, Florida State has a steal on their hands. Milton showed flashes of brilliance during the spring, but he must do more to win this job. Battling Milton for the job is Jordan Travis, who started five games a year ago for the Seminoles. Travis is a dual-threat quarterback with a wide range of skills and a real good feel for the game who coaches Rave has really improved his passing skills and overall play over the past year, indicating he could potentially hold Milton off. Even if Travis fails to win the starting job, he will play plenty in an effort to utilize his fantastic skills. Additionally, he can learn quite a bit from Milton and will be even a better player next year. Both players have battled injuries, so we think both will play plenty. But I don't think Milton was brought in to sit if he is healthy, and all indications through fall camp thus far is that he is. Chuba Purdy and Tate Rodemaker are battling for the backup position behind Milton and Travis and our future potential starting quarterbacks for the Seminoles. The national media is not impressed, but I think the Florida State running back room, while young, is really good. Ja'Shawn Corbin is finally healthy after transferring in from Texas A&M and he appears to be set as the starter. We're really interested to see what he can do. Corbin is a complete back, but he lacks the breakaway speed found with sophomore Lowence Toa Feely, who will definitely get his share of carries. He is a game breaker and has a really bright future. DJ Williams, who transferred in from Auburn, is another solid option, a strong between the tackles back with good pass catching skills. Treshawn Ward has turned so many heads that he earned a scholarship. Ward makes people miss, and he could well get situational snaps. Deontay Sheffield has skills and experience, and speedster Corey Wren has a bright future. The receiving core is quite young, but that might be a good thing with this talented bunch. First, wideouts on Terry Pookie Wilson, who led the team in catches a year ago, and Keyshawn Helton will be pushed by a younger crop of talented receivers to keep their snaps. Two freshmen, Malik McLean and Joshua Burrell, have exhibited star abilities in action since their arrival. Both appear poised for significant playing time. Transfer Andrew Parchment, who actually had measurable success at Kansas, is slated for a starting position. Kentron Poitier, Brian Robinson, part-time running back Ja'Kai Douglas, and Jordan Young are all poised for action. And freshman Darian Williamson and Amorian Cooper are young players looking for an opportunity to shine. Carmen McDonald, a team leader who continues to approve at tight end, is ready to go, backed by UCLA transfer Jordan Wilson, 
who missed all of last fall, but big things are expected for him. And don't forget Wyatt Rector. This guy gets open, and he's going to be in the mix as well. The offensive line has been a hindrance for the Seminoles for several years now, but under stellar offensive line coach Alex Atkins, the unit is improving. Devontae Love Taylor is the leader up front, and he will anchor a guard spot, while Robert Scott, who is really starting to click, will grab the opposite tackle spot. Tackle Darius Washington, who we think has great potential, should start at a tackle spot. Dante Lucas played well as a freshman, but he battled injury and attitude issues in 2020. Even so, he should play at a guard spot. Maurice Lucas, who's an emerging star, will be at center and is developing into a really good player with a high football IQ. Bavion Johnson, with 20 starts under his belt, is looking to build consistently and may emerge possibly up front at guard. Perhaps battling Notre Dame transfer Dylan Gibbons for a starting spot. Robert Scott is an emerging honors candidate as well, probably lining up at tackle this fall. Having played quality snaps when given the opportunity, guard Thomas Schrader is a guy to watch. Still not as deep as one would like, this group is much improved and has a chance to be pretty decent, which is really saying something for Florida State based on recent years. If McKenzie Milton can perform at a level similar to what he showed us prior to his injury at UCF, then Florida State has a chance to really surprise to the upside. If Milton does go down or misses time, the coaches and players have full confidence in Jordan Travis, who has really improved his game. The line is better, and the backs and receivers, while young, are stocked with serious talent. This offense, if it can come together, could really surprise to the upside, averaging in the neighborhood of 35 points per game. Well, that's a look at the offense. Before we get over to the defensive side of the ball, we sure would appreciate you liking and subscribing to our page if you like Florida State football or college football in general. We will be doing some coverage throughout the year, and we'd love to have you aboard. Okay, let's go look at the defensive unit. Defensively, edge rusher Jermaine Johnson, who transferred in from Georgia, gives the Seminoles a potential all-conference player in harassing the quarterback, something sorely needed for the Seminoles' defense. Marcus Cushney transferred in from Alabama A&M primarily to rush the passer, and he has demonstrated that ability in fall camp, so look for him in these situations. Patrick Payton, a freshman, may emerge here as well. Dennis Briggs has really improved and seems destined to start a defensive tackle. Fabian Lovett, Robert Cooper, and True Thompson are legit players in there as well. Keir Thomas, among a pair of transfers from South Carolina, will grab an interior end spot with Dexter McClendon and Quayshawn Fuller backing up. Linebacker Amari Gaynor is a high-level athlete, but he is a tweener, and coaches are working to find the best spot for him. But make no mistake, he needs to be on the field. Steven Dix has done really well off the field in the weight room and has a chance to really jump as a sophomore middle linebacker, but the light bulb has appeared to have gone off for both Kalen DeLoach and DJ Lundy, so keep an eye on those guys. Jaleel McRae has played some quality ball in the past, and Emmett Rice has played some decent ball as well, so those guys could certainly figure in. The secondary is the Seminole strong suit. Miko Dotson, who was among the nation's top interceptors at FAU in 2019, may start at boundary corner. Jerry and Jones will play snaps, and coaches are hoping for redshirt freshman Demory Tate that he can emerge. Jarvis Brownlee will play the field corner, backed by Hunter Washington, who has made some plays in fall camp. However, Travis J is the class of the secondary, and he could start at any number of spots, including corner, in addition to his buck spot. Brendan Gant backs up the safety spot along with Sidney Williams. Coaches have placed five-star Akeem Dent at free safety. He has a great skill set, and he should be out there somewhere. Renardo Green, a proven commodity, is back from injury as well. Arkansas transfer Jaquez McClellan is ready. It is noted that freshman safety Shaheen Brown has been most impressive since arriving and has left the coaches no choice but to get him on the field on occasion. As well with freshman defensive back Kevin Knowles, who is really emerging as a future star. He might just start at nickel, where South Carolina transfer Jamie Robinson appears to be set. There are plenty of moving pieces in this secondary, and I took some liberties guessing where these folks might be lining up, which remains fluid, but this is definitely a strong point of the FSU defense and really could be among the best in the conference. The defense has built some quality depth, and there's talent at each level of the unit. There are some holes and consistency issues, but overall, this appears to be an increasingly strong unit, one which can make up significant difference for the Seminoles. They're not dominating, but this defensive unit can do enough damage to keep the Seminoles in most every game. 
Ryan Fitzgerald had trouble keeping the place kicker job last year, so Parker Growthhouse took over. Both are competing this fall, but neither performed well enough to consider this a position of strength. Alex Mastermano will handle punts, but improvement is needed there as well. Returning kicks was a long-time strength for the Seminoles. However, the return game was not all that great in recent years. There have been plenty of players with high levels of speed and elusiveness. Perhaps the Seminoles can turn to Corey Wren. He might be the answer there. The culture change is in full swing, and it appears that all the bad apples have hit the road. Everything seems to be going well since the 2020 season concluded. But the schedule's among the toughest in the land, and it's unknown how Florida State will handle adversity, which is sure to come. The opener hosting Notre Dame presents a wonderful opportunity, but a loss in this game does not knock FSU out of the opportunity to continue to lay the foundation for a future big-time winning program. The weekly grind, particularly late in the season, will be grueling. Keeping mental focus and discipline will be the challenging effort for the coaches and players, and the Seminoles could be a good football team, but even have a losing record in 2021. Most associated with the Florida State football program are not focused on the Seminoles' overall record this fall, but are rather looking to see improvement across the board, zeroing in on teamwork, player development, and discipline. But if Mackenzie Milton is healthy and anywhere close to his old self, a high level of play from him at the all-important quarterback position could put things into a different perspective. Even so, the schedule is terribly difficult. FSU opens at home against Notre Dame, who will be favored by over a touchdown. The home crowd at Doak will be electric, and given that Notre Dame suffered significant losses on both sides of the ball and at quarterback, a golden opportunity presents itself. Call it a premonition, but whether it is Milton leading the way or not, we have the Seminoles finding a way to get a win here. This will be a game changer for the program under Norvell and can lead to bigger things as the season progresses. FSU then defeats Jacksonville State before traveling to face Wake Forest, a very dangerous team. FSU wins very close in a nail-biter as we see it. Florida State then comes home for back-to-back -back games facing Louisville and Syracuse, games where we think the Seminoles will win by a couple of touchdowns. FSU then at 5-0 travels to Chapel Hill to face North Carolina, a top-10 squad smarting from the upset loss they absorbed in Tallahassee last year. We think FSU loses this one. After a bye week, FSU hosts UMass for homecoming. Then comes a murderous stretch. Florida State travels to Clemson, where they will have little to no chance of winning. FSU then faces a strong NC State team in Tallahassee, but before you count that as a win, it's worth noting the Knowles face Miami the following week, so NC State is a sandwich game. Maybe they lose to NC State but upset Miami, but FSU loses one, if not both, of those. FSU then travels to Boston College, who under their outstanding new head coach with a powerful offensive line and a stellar running back is better than most anyone thinks. That will be a very tight game for sure, and it may just depend on how the quarterback position is performing for the Seminoles. FSU then drives down to Hogtown to face the Gators. A win there is possible, but it certainly would be an upset. It will be an exciting year for the Seminoles, kind of reminding me of those 83, 84, 85 teams. The Seminoles will be better at every position with notable offensive and defensive improvement. Even so, that schedule is really tough, particularly late. So we project FSU to finish 7-5 and five and go bowling. Let's enjoy the ride, guys. Go Knowles! Well, folks, we hope you enjoyed our preview of the 2021 Florida State Seminoles. Drop us some comments and let us know how, what you think, what your prediction for the season is. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time.